Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, greeting my fellow Tele Club colleagues. My name is Paulina Suslova and I'm to talk about what's the difference between pseudoscience and science, what does it mean to think critically. We're going to dive into the concept of scientific method and consider why do people believe in pseudoscience. Carl Sagan, a famous astronomer and pro-science activist, once said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. We often do not stick to the statement and subject the truth in pseudoscience. If we omit this thought, we could then face misconceptions and wrongly assess the information. So eventually charlatans may deceive you and me. In real life, it happens quite frequently. Sometimes even sane and educated people become anti-science victims. Our school system, for example, and it's my personal opinion, is trying to teach us many different skills, excluding the most important one, the ability to think critically and identify what is real knowledge. In essence, critical thinking requires people to apply the ability to reason. Analyzers rigorously question beliefs and assumptions rather than accepting them at face value. They will always be eager to determine whether, whether the ideas, arguments or findings represent the entire picture. Critical thinkers will analyze and solve problems systematically rather than by intuition or instinct. What are the needed skills to think critically? They do vary. Observation, reflection, evaluation, inference, problem solving and decision making. Scientific method is an epistemological system for obtaining knowledge and the foundation to think critically. At the core of modern scientific practice method is the idea that the value of a hypothesis, theory or concept is best determined by its ability to make falsifiable predictions that one can test against an empirical reality. Simply put, there must be a way to prove a theory false in order to know if it could be true. For example, Horoscopes are not scientific, because there is no way to disprove claims that are broad, vague and contradictory. How could you disprove a horoscope that says, now is a good time to start something new, or the universe is, is pushing you into a more polarized environment? Conversely, Isaac Newton theories are falsifiable, and the reason is that we could test the idea that for every action there is an equal opposite reaction. We all know that this principle is true. Erring is a part of human nature. It is common for us people to make mistakes. Thus, the proven scientific method is the key to be objective. Trust, but verify. Next on the menu is pseudoscience. What kind of a dish is it? Pseudoscience is an imaginary set of beliefs, mistakenly considered as scientifically proven. Here are some points that could help understand the difference between pseudoscience and science better. For example, science uses careful observation and experimentation to confirm or reject a hypothesis. Pseudoscience conflicting evidence is ignored, excused or hidden. The original ideas never abandon whatever the evidence. Science use reproducible results. They are required of experience. Experiments. In case of failure, no excuses are acceptable. In pseudoscience, results cannot be reproduced or verified. Excuses are freely invented to explain the failure of any scientific test. Personal stories or testimonials are not accepted as evidence in science. But in pseudoscience, personal stories or testimonials are relied upon for evidence. Science convinces by appeal to evidence, by arguments based on logical or mathemati mathematical reasoning. Pseudoscience attempts to persuade by appeal to emotions, faith, sentiment, or distrust of established facts. Science progresses. As science goes on, more and more is learned. In pseudoscience, there is no progress. Nothing new is learned as time passes. There is only a succession of facts. As an example of anti-science, let's review homeopathy. 
is it a true sense of medical treatment or not? Homeopathy is based on two principal methods, like yours like and the method called potentization. Everyone knows that red onions cause tears and caffeine keeps one awake. Thus, according to the homeopathy logic, red onions are used in remedies for allergies and caffeine is used to treat insomnia, like juice like is the principle. But only if those ingredients are watered down large amount of times. And here comes another principle called potentization. The idea is that diluting the ingredients activates the curative powers and enhances the effects. The ingredients are dissolved in alcohol or distilled water. Homeopaths take one part of the solution and mix it with nine parts of pure water, diluting it to one tenth and shake it. This action is repeated numerously until the desired potency grade is reached. The extreme dilution is supposed to make the ingredients more potent, but on a physical level this doesn't really make sense. Some homeopath remedies, homeopathic remedies are diluted so much that the resulting formula will not contain even one molecule of the solute. In simple words, there is no active ingredient in the homeopathy treatment. In their defense, homeopaths claim that water can somehow remember what was dissolved in it and pass the effects of those absent molecules onto the patient. But if this was true, then every substance that ever met a drop of water would leave an essence behind it and lead to unpredictable effects when it was accidentally ingested. So every sip of water would be a supercharged homeopathic cocktail. To prove my point, there is a 2015 report where the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council considered the results of 200 studies on the effectiveness of homeopathy. While looking at the provided evidence, they concluded homeopathy is no better than a sugar pill or placebo. Without a doubt, Homeopathy is a debatable and controversial topic. The number of its key notions go against the fundamental scientific concepts. For example, it's not possible to explain in scientific terms how medication containing a little amount or no active ingredient at all can provide any positive effect. This in turn creates major challenges to rigorous clinical investigations of such products. Astrology, ufology, parapsychology, phrenology, medics, etc. Just like homeopathy are considered as pseudosciences. Some uh, they're all connected to different science fields. Some are related with psychology, others with medicine, some with astronomy. But what unites all pseudosciences, neither one of them could be scientifically proven. A very interesting phenomenon, according to the National Institutes of Health, about 6 million people in the United States rely on homeopathy. What makes it so popular? There are a few explanations. Firstly, poor scientific literacy. Some people just don't know how science works, so pseudoscience could easily charm them. Secondly, confirmation bias. Some people just want to believe in what makes them comfortable and aligns with their personal experiences. And the last but not least, popular misinformation. Successful advertising usually leads to large sales, even if the remedies are ineffective. Pseudoscience pursues certain material goals. For example, in the United States alone, only in 2017, uh, were generated, homeopathy generated over $7.5 billion. Pseudoscience misinforms people. For example, one was diagnosed with a severe disease and instead of going to a real doctor and get proper prescribed medication, one goes to a homeopath specialist and wastes time and money. Therefore, in order not to fall into the charlatan's trap, analyze the depth and the cause of the problem. Think critically and remember, you are the keepers of your own health. Thank you for your attention, your great audience. Stay healthy and don't forget to smile.